stocks, of course, after Tesla hit yet another record high during the regular session. In the current quarter, 75% higher and counting. I am bullish on Tesla. Tesla chief executive Elon Musk has defied big odds and consistently beat expectations since taking the helm of the electric vehicle manufacturer in 2008. Now, after having done so yet again with a better than expected third quarter earnings report and acceptance into the S&P 500. Everything to do with Tesla's admission to the S&P 500 at the close of trading. That means the whole index needs to be rebalanced to make room for a stock that just won't quit, including today, where Tesla closed up $39. And of course, becoming your favorite YouTuber's favorite car. This is crazy. This is actually driving by itself. It's my Tesla Model 3. A year ago, I answered the question what my favorite Tesla was after owning all three. Is Tesla stock a buy? Some say Tesla stock is overpriced. Others believe Tesla is going to the moon. The base case, uh, it's a five-year target, so the end of 24, end of 24 uh, it's right. uh, $7,000. In this video presented by Investing for Dummies, based on a Morningstar report, we're going to discuss Tesla's business strategy and outlook, economic moat, profit drivers, and stewardship. This is an in-depth report, so sit tight, get comfortable, grab some popcorn or maybe some drinks, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and let's get right into this video. Part number one, business strategy and outlook. Tesla has a chance to be the dominant electric vehicle firm long term and is a leading autonomous vehicle player as well as a vertically integrated sustainable energy company with energy generation and storage products, but Morningstar analysts do not see it having mass market volume this decade. Tesla's product plans for now do not mean an electric vehicle for every consumer who wants one, because the prices are too high. The Model X crossover released in late 2015 starts at about $80,000, the Model S sedan starting price is $69,420, the Model 3 sedan starts at $37,990, and the Model Y crossover starts at about $50,000. Tesla's US customers no longer receive the federal tax credit. Tesla's gigafactories may become terafactories as Tesla seeks to grow its cell capacity to 3 terawatts by 2030 from 0.1 terawatt hours in 2019. A new factory in Shanghai, wholly owned by Tesla, opened in late 2019 with capacity as of fall 2020 for 250,000 Model 3 and another 150,000 units for Model Y online in 2021. Gigafactory Berlin is under construction until 2021 as is a Texas plant for Cybertruck and why Tesla's global vehicle capacity as of fall 2020 is about 850,000. Tesla sold about 368,000 vehicles globally in 2019 and by 2030 or earlier CEO Elon Musk targets annual volume of 20 million, about double the size of Toyota and VW Group. We think global mass adoption of pure electric vehicles is still years away, but Tesla is the leader in the space. Tesla will have growing pains, recessions to fight through before reaching mass market volume or competition, and needs to pay off debt. It is important to keep the hype about Tesla in perspective relative to the firm's limited, though now growing, production capacity. Tesla's mission is to make EVs increasingly more affordable, which means more assembly plants must come online to achieve annual unit delivery volume in the millions. This expansion will cost billions a year in capital spending and research and development, and will be necessary even during downturns in the economic cycle. Part number two, economic moat. Tesla's brand cachet is not likely to be impaired anytime soon as other automakers move into the battery electric vehicle, or BEV, space because we expect Tesla to keep innovating to stay ahead of startup and established competitors. The Model S now offers over 400 miles of range and the plaid mode performance upgrade available in late 2021 will enable the sedan to do 0-60 miles per hour in under 2 seconds, and have over 520 miles of range. Tesla's autonomous program is also well ahead of many other automakers. Musk was very smart to not only design a great-looking car, but also have Tesla right away sell vehicles at a premium price point. This created tremendous media publicity for Tesla beyond its customers, which creates a halo effect for Model 3 and Model Y demand when they were introduced, as well as for the Cybertruck, which is kind of ugly, but that ugliness is ironically part of its appeal. Sure? Yeah. Oh my god. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. If Tesla had started with a mass market vehicle, it probably would have failed, as too few people would have known about the car and would have been willing to pay for the brand. I also think Tesla benefits from a first mover advantage in electric vehicles that let it build factories and vehicles from scratch and create processes that legacy automakers will likely find hard to match. 
the ability to possibly reduce battery cell costs by 56%, as outlined at the firm's September 22nd Battery Day event, suggests a cost advantage that incumbent automakers could take years to catch or may never catch as they won't want to build many new factories from scratch like Tesla is doing. Legacy automakers are gradually transitioning to BEV production from internal combustion, but we expect they will be saddled with legacy internal combustion engine, or ICE, costs and people costs for a long time. Our projected Tesla return on invested capital assumptions are well above our weighted average cost of capital even in our bear case scenario. The mode upgrade assumes Tesla continues to grow, and we see low risk of material value destruction and more reasons to upgrade the mode in October 2020 than keep waiting for further improvement. We think Tesla's gross margin, all else constant, would have a negative mix shift over time as the cheaper Model 3, Model Y, and a planned $25,000 vehicle become the vast majority of volume, but battery costs should also decline significantly. These reductions in adjusted gross margin calculations we've done comparing Tesla to German automakers along with Tesla's unique factory-owned stores enabling the firm to get retail pricing rather than wholesale pricing are in our view a cost advantage over other automakers and lays the ground for the moat widening once Tesla's volume allows more scale of its research and development and overhead expense. A similar scale argument can be made for the energy business. Though long term there's nothing stopping an ICE firm from being a BEV-only firm and narrowing Tesla's cost advantage, we see legacy firms as having legacy cost structures around ICE vehicle programs that cannot be eliminated overnight as these programs are needed to keep those firms profitable while also developing BEVs. The other cost advantage comes from the customer side via total cost of ownership, as the cost of electricity for a year versus the cost of gas is not even close. Model S owners' electric costs are a fraction of what ICE owners pay for gas, per our calculations. Our annual cost calculation done in January 2020, defined as electricity or gas, insurance, and maintenance, shows the Model 3's cost per mile at about 15% less than a BMW 330i. Part number 3, Fair Value and Profit Drivers Morningstar's fair value estimate is $306 after factoring in Tesla's $5 billion December equity offering. Tesla's annual capacity is increasing rapidly, and the third quarter earnings release has it at $840,000. With new plants partially opening in Berlin, Texas, and the Model E Shanghai plan all in 2021, 2021 deliveries of around 1 million units are not unrealistic. We then expect another large capacity increase in 2022 as Model Y crossover capacity in each of the three plants above should be at least 250,000. We add in the present value of what Tesla's autonomous vehicle ride hailing business could be worth in 2030, and value it discounted at about $13.2 billion. This figure assumes Tesla captures 10% robotaxi share across the combined markets of the US, EU, and China, and charges 25 cents a mile. We expect the company to remain a leader in autonomous technology and range. Tesla is also gaining scale, and its ability to make desirable vehicles while generating free cash flow and net profit is far better than it's ever been. Analysts model total deliveries over 10-year forecast period of about 22.7 million. Tesla is a volatile name and fair value estimate changes may be frequent as its story changes. Analysts add back about $4.6 billion of non-recourse debt to the valuation. When modeling Tesla in a discounted cash flow model, it's important to keep an open mind regarding the disruptive potential of Tesla in the auto and utilities industry. Tesla has upside margin potential if it can reduce its battery cost, significantly exceed delivery estimates, and have a high margin storage and autonomous ride hailing business. Analysts model $1.8 billion of energy revenue in 2020, with that figure growing to about $17.5 billion by 2029. This revenue is about 6% of the fair value estimate. Part number 4, Risk and Uncertainty Investing in Tesla comes with tremendous uncertainties due to the future of electric vehicles and energy storage. In a recession, investors may not want to hold the stock of a firm whose story will not play out until the next decade, or Tesla could fail to raise capital when it needs it. Until an electric vehicle far cheaper than the Model 3 goes on sale in mass volume, there is no way to know for sure if consumers in large volume are willing to switch to an EV and deal with range anxiety and longer charging times compared with using a gas station. Tesla is fighting a state-by-state -state battle to keep its stores factory-owned rather than franchised, which raises legal risk for Tesla and could one day stall growth. Other automakers are entering the BEV space. If the company's growth ever stalls or reverses, we would expect a severe decline in the stock price because current expectations for Tesla are immense, in our opinion. With a young, growing company, there is always more risk of diluting shareholders or taking on too much debt to fund growth. Tesla also has customer concentration risk, with the US and China constituting about 64% of 2019 revenue, up from 56% in 2015. 
we see immense key man risk for the stock, as Tesla's fate is closely linked to Musk's actions. Should he leave the company or the SEC bans him from running Tesla, we would not be surprised to see the stock fall dramatically. Also, Musk has 18.5 million Tesla shares as collateral for personal debt. Selling this block of shares quickly may cause a rapid fall in Tesla's stock price. Tesla will soon have formidable electric vehicle competition from German premium brands, General Motors and Ford, that it's never had before. It's uncertain if Tesla vehicle owners will also want solar panels and batteries in sufficient volume to justify buying SolarCity. Given the many uncertainties regarding Tesla today, the fair value uncertainty rating will remain very high for a long time. Part number 5, Stewardship. Morningstar analysts award Tesla a standard stewardship rating. Musk is barred from holding the chairman role for three years following a 2018 settlement with the SEC on civil securities fraud charges. Well, Elon Musk is at the center of controversy again, this time accused of fraud. And that's all because of a series of tweets. Well, Cindy in the Cube has the details. Yeah, this is huge news because not only are they accusing Elon Musk of fraud, but they want him to step down as the head of Tesla. And it all started with this tweet in August. Tesla also had to name two new independent directors. In December 2018, Tesla appointed Oracle founder Larry Ellison and Walgreens HR boss Kathleen Wilson Thompson to the board to fulfill the settlement. Ellison is a fierce Elon cheerleader, so we doubt he will give Musk any headaches. In November 2018, Tesla named Robin Denholm chairman. She has been on Tesla's board since 2014 and has experience both in autos with Toyota Australia and finance and in technology as CFO and COO of Juniper Networks and CFO of Telstra and time at Sun Microsystems. Analysts like that she resigned as Telstra's CFO to focus full-time on Tesla. Analysts do not expect major changes in Tesla day-to-day -day and still think it is the Elon Musk show. Denham's top priority in our view will be to keep Musk content and ensure he doesn't say anything to violate his SEC settlement. Musk in 2020 again attacked the SEC on Twitter which makes us nervous given he already has a strike against him with the agency. Morningstar considered downgrading their rating after the all-stock offer to acquire Solar City closed because the offer came about one month after Tesla raised equity and at the time there was no disclosure of a possible acquisition. The deal to acquire a firm led by two of Elon Musk's cousins after Solar City's stock had fallen by 75% since early 2014 is not what analysts like to see. However, there is a valid strategic rationale for acquiring Solar City, which is to make Tesla a vertically integrated sustainable energy company. Musk is synonymous with Tesla, and the stock could suffer if he resigns. We doubt he will resign soon, however, because shareholders approved a new 10-year performance award in January 2018. Proposal was a step in the right direction, but we see the 10-member board is still friendly to Musk. Analysts would like to see the entire board up for election annually and more members with fewer ties to Musk. Musk has arguably too much responsibility serving as Tesla and SpaceX CEO, plus running the boring company and artificial intelligence plans, which raises the risk of him being pulled in too many directions. Directors and officers own over 23% of Tesla's stock, so Elon's interests are aligned with Tesla's shareholders, but other shareholders are essentially along for the ride. Well, that's it for today's video. Do you own Tesla stock? Will you invest in Tesla? Let us know in the comments down below. These videos take a lot to make, it would be awesome if you could smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and, subscribe to our channel. Stay bullish.